Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time to do a iPhone 13 Pro charge test between Belkin's Boost Charge 15 watt wireless charger versus Apple MagSafe with the 20 watt power adapter. Both of these chargers, you can find them at your local Apple store or apple.com or even better, Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description. Which one is going to charge your phone the fastest? Let's find out. I'm going to be using an iPhone 13 as a timer while keeping it charged using Anchor's Nano Pro. This charger is the same exact size as Apple's 5 watt power adapter, but the trick is it is not 5 watts, it is 20 watts and you can get the color that matches your phone, even better. Thank you Anchor for sponsoring a portion of this video. Both iPhone 13 Pros are completely dead, not even showing the battery indicator whatsoever. The gold iPhone to the left, I'm going to be using a wireless charger, while the phone on the right, the silver iPhone, I'm going to be using the MagSafe charger. In five minutes and 39 seconds, the MagSafe was able to power up the iPhone while the wireless charger is still taking its time. In 8 minutes and 22 seconds, the Belkin Boost Charge finally pulled through. Meanwhile, on the MagSafe side is at 4%. The first initial boot, the MagSafe takes the lead so far. Twelve minutes in, the wireless charger was able to charge the iPhone to 4%. Meanwhile, on the MagSafe, it was able to charge the iPhone to 11%. Fifteen minutes in, wireless charger is at 8%, MagSafe 15%. In 17 minutes, wireless charging is at 10%, MagSafe is at 17%. So MagSafe is taking the lead here. Twenty-three minutes, wireless charge, thirteen percent, MagSafe twenty-two. Thirty minutes in, the Belkin wireless charger is tailing behind with 17%, while the MagSafe is at 29%. There's a weird glitch going on where I can't animate the 9, but 32 minutes in, MagSafe is at 31%, while the wireless charger is at 19%. 41 minutes in, the wireless charger was able to get to 24%, while MagSafe is still leading at 39%. On the 50 minute mark, we at 29% on the wireless charge. Like I said, I can't get that nine to animate while MagSafe is at 46%. But fast forward all the way five minutes later, the wireless charger from Belkin is able to get to 31% while MagSafe is at 50%. So halfway there with the MagSafe charger, which is incredible. Now we at that golden hour now, the MagSafe is able to get to 54% while the wireless charger is at 32%. Now keep in mind, the higher the percentage, the slower the charge is gonna be, especially once it hits 80%. Now one hour and 10 minutes, 62 on MagSafe, 35 on the wireless charger. An hour and 20 minutes, the MagSafe is at 68%, while the wireless charger is at 38%. That's a 30% difference right there. And an hour and 30 minutes, 41% on the wireless charger, while 75 on the MagSafe. So at this point, I'm good to go for me. An hour and 41 minutes, 80% on MagSafe, 44 on the wireless charger. And getting into the two hour mark, we have the wireless charger at 50% while the MagSafe is at 85. And shortly after 10 minutes later, Belkin is finally at 53%. Meanwhile, 91% on the MagSafe. And then 10 minutes after that, 55 on the wireless charger, 96% on the MagSafe. So almost done on the MagSafe side and then completed. MagSafe is done, two hours and 32 minutes and 59% on the wireless charger. Two hours and 45 minutes, the wireless charger is at 62%, only 62%. So at this point on, I'm just gonna let you guys watch it through.
hours and 44 minutes, finally, finally, the Belkin finished charging the iPhone 13 Pro. MagSafe is the winner. MagSafe completely wiped the floor, beating out wireless charging by a landslide. I remember being so critical about the MagSafe charging last year. My theory, Apple pushed out a bunch of updates to support faster charging for MagSafes and it definitely was worth the wait. So even though I didn't recommend it last year, this year is a totally different story. And I'm known for always keeping that same energy, but now I'm at the backtrack. I recommend MagSafe. Now, I don't know what happened with the wireless charging, but I remember getting the same exact charging speeds last year on the MagSafe. And this year is just a totally different story. The reason why I went with Belkin is because if you go to the Apple store, they have Belkin wireless chargers, they sell Belkin. So it just makes sense. I just wanted to make it as realistic as possible. Because remember, MagSafe can go up to 15 watts of charging, which is incredible, but wireless charging is only 7.5 watts. So that's what happened here. Basically, using wireless charging is the equivalent of using a 5 watt power adapter. All right, so I've been reading the comments, and a lot of people were saying you're not going to get the same wattage as, like, you know, if, once the phone is fully charged, you're not going to max out the watts. And that's true. And I said that on the video. That's the best thing with iPhones, it's not going to always take as much watts it's only going to take whatever it needs so i have a completely dead iphone 13 pro this is totally dead not even turning on and i'm going to attach this and we're going to test exactly how many watts is going so you guys can see seven watts and it exceeds it shoots all the way up to 10 watts sometimes 11 watts then the wireless charge which we're going to test right now to that light yep there it goes there goes the light so this should be going up so it's not going to go higher than five watts but sometimes it might exceed the five watts for a split second so more wattage going to magsafe versus wireless charge that's the conclusion magsafe totally wins that concludes today's video i hope you guys find this one helpful if it did i appreciate it with a thumbs up make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this one and other than that your boy pops and i catch you guys on the next video